homemade tomato sauce. So many reasons make me feel that Italian cuisine is very similar with Korean cuisine. I think similar natural environment might be the main reason. For the Korean, it is very useful ingredients if you have soy sauce, doenjang, and gochujang at home. Well, Italian cuisine might be the same if you have homemade tomato sauce, hmm. I know there are tons of recipes for this simple sauce, but today i like to share my recipe which I used this recipe since I opened my first Italian restaurant 8 years ago. I had a chance to make this sauce many times with others and mine as well, but I still love mine as the best. And I'm going to show you how you can keep it long for a crazy tomato sauce lover. Prep time is 10 minutes and cook time is 1 hour. Ingredients 125 milliliters of extra virgin olive oil, 630 grams of coarse diced yellow onion, and 125 grams of chopped garlic, and one big can of whole tomato, and two dried bay leaves, and one and a half tablespoons of kosher salt, one and a half tablespoons of sugar, and one and a half tablespoons of dried basil. If you are using fresh basil, and you'll need four and a half tablespoons and two tablespoons of butter. Equipment, you'll need chopping board, knife, measuring cup, measuring spoon, pot, can opener, wooden spoon, and hand blender as an option. Dice the onion into quarter inch and chop the garlic. Many chefs tell that you need to cut the onion into horizontal after you slice it lengthwise, but mine doesn't have this step. I cut tons of onions since I started my career at the Italian restaurant. And this was what I learned from the beginning, but many chefs never know until I show them. I'm not sure why, but I guess it might not be popular, but this is the best and easiest way. It helps to get uniform cut if you put your index finger on the spin as a guide. If you have right hand, then left hand is your guide hand. And try to make your first knuckle of index finger to perpendicular with both chopping board and blade. Once you try to make fingers that position, then your fingertip will bend automatically. Which means this position will save you from cut yourself. So the first step, cut the stem off, then peel the onion. Number two, cut in half lengthwise. Number three, cut down the onion evenly along the ridge. And number four, Turn the onion 90 degrees, then start slice evenly to make dice. Number 5, then you'll meet near the root part which doesn't get cut all the way through from number 3. Just slice evenly, then turn 90 degrees and cut along the ridge. That's it, you don't have to chop it. And one more thing, you don't need to press it to make it flat once you measure it on the measuring cup, okay? I use frozen pre-chopped garlic on this video. It is very common for Korean to have homemade frozen chopped garlic bags since we use lots of garlic on our dishes. I'll also make video of this. Heat the olive oil over medium heat in a heavy pot. Then add onion, garlic, and saute them over medium low heat until onion is translucent. This is very simple step, but very important too. And many people wonder how you can figure the oil is hot enough to add next ingredients or not. Once you heat the oil, it will move faster than before, which means concentration is getting low because of the temperature. And one more thing you can do is, you can add a small piece of onion to check it out, or salt. You will hear sizzling if all is ready. Remember, this is how you figure without putting your hands to make sure it's warm or not. Anything you add in a pot, it causes cooking temperature down. Mix them well, then turn down to medium low heat. The oil cut them well doesn't really have any left in a pot. This is a really enough amount of oil you need. You will see they make moisture while they cook and start evaporate. Please try to smell this beautiful aroma. Don't burn any onion and garlic. They shouldn't get any color, otherwise it'll cause bitterness and give ugly dark color to the sauce. Now you know why this simple step is important. This simple is the key to give great flavor of extra virgin olive oil, onion, garlic into your sauce. Add tomato, mix it well, then wait until it makes tiny bubbles on the surface. 
I'm going to use hand blender at the end, so if you don't have it, just crush whole tomato now by hand. It is very tender to crush by hand. Also, my sauce is sort of chunky, so use a blender if you like creamy sauce. Well, this one tastes almost the same as tomato basil soup. I'm not a big fan of canned tomato, but there are a few things that I have to use. And this canned tomato is one of them. Try to buy canned tomato from Italy. As all we know, natural environment makes food a lot differently. Once it makes bubbles, add bay leaves, then simmer about 40 minutes. Don't forget to stir it occasionally with a wooden spoon. I said 40 minutes, but it can be 10 minutes more or 10 minutes less, so check your sauce always. Bay leaf is the type of herb which needs long time to give their flavor into your food. So it is good for long hour cooking method like a stock and sauce. Okay, why can we use fresh tomatoes when we make tomato sauce? Well, the answer is, it is very hard to get deep flavor from them. Yes, there is way to make it almost same as canned tomato, but you have to roast fresh tomato of a low heat before you make the sauce. Then you'll have almost same taste. Add dry basil, kosher salt, and sugar, then simmer it 10 minutes more. Okay, another key of this sauce, simmering. If you boil this over high heat, it will bring more sourness from tomatoes and doesn't have enough time to give flavor from ingredients to it. So make sure you give them enough time with right temperature to make nice sauce. Always heat and salt, increase sourness, and sugar and butter reduce it. I prefer to use fresh herb, but I didn't have enough basil from my herb pot when I make this. So, if you have to use dried herb just like me, add it about 10 minutes before you finish your sauce. So this way, it gets some time to bring their flavor into the sauce. Check the season and finish with butter and fresh basil after turn up the heat. I normally do simple season with basic sauce. This way, you can easily add and change its taste when you use this to make particular dish. And you don't have to add butter if sourness is okay to you. Take bay leaves off, then blend whole tomatoes by hand blender. As I mentioned on spinach clam miso soup, I made this for my sister. We had a homemade meatball with tomato sauce and had a pasta the other day. After all, I've got one small bag of sauce left. Keep the sauce in a small zip bag, then freeze them. Then pull it out one day before you want to use. Now you don't have to spend time to make tomato sauce all the time. Cook something else with it. Make some delicious pasta and lasagna or pizza. Mm -mm -mm. And forget about jar and canned tomato sauce at the store. Thank you for watching. I'll come back with delicious homemade meatball. So see you all next time.